Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm excited, it's week five. Yeah! This is the week for me that it's gonna start getting harder. I'm gonna be doing some speed training this week, one session. Now hopefully, I'm still going to do three low intensity sessions as long as life doesn't get in the way again. And I'm gonna get a speed session in as well. So, I'm ready, I'm ready for this speed work. If you're not ready though, if you're still finding it difficult, you're still doing majority walking, then just add some more weeks to it. I found an article last week on Runner's World's website um, with a good introduction to running and they recommend a seven week uh, plan of low intensity walk running, conversational running. Now they, they specifically specify that. So it's not like the couch to 5K or a lot of couch to 5Ks where they just say run, then walk, then run, then walk, and they don't specify the effort level when you're running. This one on Runner's World specified the effort level. So I'm gonna link that in the description. And again, seven weeks. So go for seven weeks before you introduce the speed work. Boy, so that's that one done. Ah, oh, this is gonna be super echoey. Uh, but that was a great run, much faster. Um, my time heart rate was too high. I'm feeling good and I'm feeling fresh and I'm feeling ready for a speed session this week. So, week five, run one, done. Hey, so run number two this week. I'm working from home today, so I'm going out for a local run, but the weather has definitely taken a turn for the worse now. We're getting into the colder weeks now. I've got a base layer on, grabbed a pair of gloves because my fingers are always the things that get the most cold, the long socks. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go and uh, smash a half hour low intensity run in the local area and then we're going to talk about nutrition. I'm finally trying to sort out that diet a little bit because I'm not at work today. I'm not going to grab something off the shelf. I'm going to make something at home. Don't make the mistake that I always do. <laughs> Just leave your front door or your office door and go out fast because people are around <laughs> and you want to look like a runner. It doesn't matter what you look like. I always have to stop and tell myself that. Slow down. Take it easy, ease into the run, and you'll enjoy it a lot more. So that's run two of the week done. Apologies, this might be too windy um, audio-wise. I've come next to this wall to try and eliminate the wind. Um, that was much harder today. So back-to-back -back runs for me again, even though they're low intensity, 30 minutes, I felt a lot more sluggish than I did yesterday. Uh, yesterday I felt great during the run, at the start of the run, the middle of the run, the end of the run. You see from my recording, I felt absolutely great today. Not so good. Anyway, I've done it. Um, you feel like this sometimes. Some runs feel good. Sometimes runs feel fantastic. Sometimes you feel absolutely rubbish. But you've done it, or I've done it. <laughs> Hopefully you have too. So it's ticked off. I'll have a good sleep tonight. Eat well today. I'm not going to eat crap. Um, and hopefully feel much better when I go out tomorrow. I'm indoors, I've had a shower, the run was sluggish as I said. But now it's important to feel well. I had a good sleep last night, eight and a half hours. Any coach worth their salts will tell you how important sleep is. Make sure you're getting good sleep. I'm going to do a video about that actually because I was diagnosed with sleep apnea a couple of months ago. But anyway, this is about nutrition. I'm keeping it simple. You cannot outrun a bad diet. I've been running for four weeks now and I have not lost half a kilo. <laughs> I'm exactly the same weight as I was four weeks ago and there's a simple reason for that and that is because when you start exercising if you go from not doing a lot to exercising you get more hungry. It's simple your body needs more fuel. Now the mistake I've made is I just grab whatever's available. I've said it before so I'm not putting the right fuel into my body to help my body um, fuel the running and lose a bit of weight at the same time. I'm putting too much sugar into my body ultimately. So basically, I just need to keep it simple now and really, really think week five, I'm gonna start doing the speed work and really gotta think about that because once you start doing the high intensity stuff, you'll get more hungry, trust me, because you're working even harder. Straight after a run, you will feel super hungry. So one simple thing is take on more water, drink some more water straight after exercise. Make sure you drink at least a pint of water. Uh, take your time and drink it over like 20 minutes or so. Don't eat straight away as well. Let Give your body time to relax, cool down, have a shower, drink some water, and then eat about half an hour, 40 minutes, ideally an hour later. I'm about an hour later now since I finished my run. And I'm gonna keep it simple today. I've basically got tuna, I've got two little cans. I'm gonna have both of those, I think. I've got some wholemeal bread, simple. 
I've got some mayonnaise because I'm not having tuna dry, but it's apparently lighter than light mayonnaise. So that's it. I'm gonna have a sandwich, a tuna sandwich, maybe two, uh, and that's gonna be my refuel. Bit of protein from the fish, which is perfect to help your muscles. I'm gonna crack on, make my little tuna sandwich, and hopefully in another four weeks, we'll have seen a weight loss because I'm gonna stop eating so much sugar. Three. I promise. Typical me, low intensity today, day three. Typical me, I put on loads of layers, I put on a snood, I put on gloves, it felt cold today, I put on a jacket, uh, which is now tied around my waist. Uh, but that's a good thing, right? Layer up if it's cold. A lightweight jacket, a lightweight running jacket like this one, you can just take off when you warm up, like I just have after running up a big hill, and tie it around your waist, and it's not too heavy, it's not too restrictive, it's not in the way. So another top Kick. tip. Hey everyone, it's my speed session day. So week five, and I'm throwing in a speed session on top of the usual three low intensity sessions. So it's the first week I'm doing four, four runs effectively. Um, and I don't mind telling you, I'm pretty nervous. Speed sessions are hard, they're meant to be hard. I'm forcing myself to run up and down a hill as many times as I can in 20 minutes and I've got that nervous energy you know that kind of knot in your stomach when you're worried about something but my advice is harness that but rein yourself in as well because it can make you go out super fast when you warm up and I'm guilty of doing that anyway so that's why I've stopped to walk actually because we're doing a speed session on a hill the warm-up is key so I'm gonna do a good 10 minutes after I finish talking up this big hill and back down again and then the second most important thing is to mobilize. So you warm your body up, but then you need to mobilize all your joints. And we'll go through that and I'll film it. Um, but let's crack on and get the 10 minute warm up done. And I'll see you for the mobilizations. I just remembered what I wanted to say about that nervous energy and it being a difficult session. Ideally, do it with a friend or a group. Because when you're on your own, if anything's difficult with running, it's really, really easy therefore to to quit and stop doing it. Um, even if you're all different paces, it doesn't matter. Because you're going up and down, up and down, up and down. You're passing each other constantly and therefore encouraging each other. Top tip. Okay, so I've done a 10 minute warm up, so I'm nice and warm, but now it's really, really important if you're gonna be running fast to, especially on a hill like this. I don't know how well you can see the steepness. It's really difficult to get across a hill on, uh, on camera. But hopefully from my Strava you'll be able to see the profile. It's, it's a pretty steep hill. <laughs> I've never run up it actually, so this is going to be fun. But it's really, really important now to mobilise and get all the joints loosened up, including my shoulders. <laughs> Okay, so I've mobilized all the major joints and muscles. Um, my heart rate's dropped now though, um, so I need to get my heart rate back up before I start doing the proper effort. One last tip, um, I'll put two fingers up. One last tip um, is have some water nearby 
I haven't brought water out with me because I didn't want to carry it while I was warming up, but it's back in the locker so I can take on some water straight after this. And if you're doing a speed session, make sure you've hydrated well before. It's about half past 12 now, and I've drunk, I don't know, probably almost a litre of water this morning, spread out across the whole morning. Um, but I'm going to do a warm up. Uh, run just to check out the hill as well risk assess it and make sure there's nothing that's going to cause me any issues whilst I'm running up there slippery surfaces and stuff uh, so I warm up lap up the hill it took me about 41 seconds so I'm probably looking to do these reps around 30 seconds maybe maybe 35 and I want to try and keep them all consistent if I can there's no point smashing your first one or your first two only to start dying towards the end of the 20 minutes. You want to be doing a nice pace. I'd say six to seven out of 10 effort and try and maintain it for all of them. So here we go. First one done. I've only gone as far as this lorry. Don't want to go around it. It's narrow, risk assess. Uh, keep tall, keep your stride short but quick. Try and keep upright if you can. Slight lean into the hill but from the hips, only slight, not from the shoulders, but from the hips. And use your arms, drive those arms as you're going uphill with a forward momentum, not across the body, a forward momentum to really drive you up the hill. Um, I'm walking back down just so I can talk to you, but I'm gonna crack on with the rest now. Oh, the other thing is, if you suffer from a tight Achilles, lower legs, lower calves, then warm up those a lot more than you normally would before you do a hill session because you need to be on your toes a lot more so it's a lot more strain on the lower car trying to show you the hill it's steep i'm walking again <laughs> three done i just remembered breathing it's really really key you keep the chest open head up looking up the hill and get nice big sharp quick breaths in in through the nose out through the mouth if you can i'm a total mouth breather though so it's mainly in through the mouth for me but do what feels comfortable for you uh, if you're a beginner um, and it's your first ever speed session i advise don't start on hills actually but if you do just jog up them and walk down jog up walk down and just do as many as you can in 20 minutes um, don't try and blast it like i am Okay, number four coming up. That's ten. Oh, I'm struggling now. But you guys, knowing I've got to film it, put it on Strava and keeping me going. Just done 11 and I've got 40 seconds left on the clock. But I'm going to do a 12. Definitely. It'll be 13 including the warm-up one in just over 20 minutes. Whew. Okay, it's 12 done in just over 21 minutes I think that included the warm-up one I did as well so it's 13 times up and down it's a speed session done I know I was running up this hill faster than I've been running on flats so that's my 20% done in week five now it's vitally important you don't just stop you do a nice cool down or warm down as some people call it so I'm gonna jog it back in but make sure you do this jog recovery uh, and then stretch that's this week done absolutely feel on top of the world three low intensity one high intensity feel good i've eaten well this week i'm not eating too much junk i have eaten some but not every day so onwards and upwards happy running